Is remembering agonist and antagonist muscle pairs. Step number one, choose your agonist muscle. Step number two, know which action is happening at the joint when the muscle contracts concentrically. Concentrically is that the muscle gets shorter. So as the muscle fibers are collapsing, can, it's a concentric contraction. And what joint action is happening as it concentrically contracts? That's step two. Then step three is about finding the exercise that works that same muscle and creates that joint action to change. So that's it in brief. Now let's go through with a quick example. So we're gonna use, find our agonist muscle to start off with. We're gonna use the glutes. Then we need to know what the joint action is when that muscle contracts concentrically. So when the glutes, muscle fibers get drawn together and they collapse, what joint action happens? So it's hip extension for the glutes in the concentric contraction. And then for the eccentric contraction, it's gonna be the opposite movement. So here the muscle's getting shorter, here the muscle's getting longer. So what would be the opposite joint action to hip extension? So we've got hip flexion for the eccentric contraction. Notice that these are exact opposite joint actions. One created by a concentric contraction, one created by an eccentric contraction. Then you just need to know what exercise would work when the, for hip extension. So for glutes, what exercise would work when I'm having a concentric contraction of the glutes? So we're gonna put squats in here. And at the top of that squat, you go through full hip extension at the very top, and that's where you know that you're a concentric contraction. Okay. Now, in order to find the antagonist for this muscle and for that exercise, so you can have agonist, antagonist, supersets, etc., you want to be able to get, have a joint action opposite. So what happens is you just draw a cross in this middle here, and then the hip flexion goes down here, and the hip extension goes on this side because they are working opposite each other. They are agonist antagonist pairs. So they are working opposite, which means whatever muscle it is we're working on is going to have hip flexion as its concentric contraction. And you go, okay, so let me think about this. If I was to concentrically um, sort of reduce my flexion in my hips and flex my hips, what muscle would I be using? So the answer is going to be our hip flexors or our iliopsoas. So then that's the muscle that I'm going to use. So then I can go, okay, well, what exercise do I know that will create that hip flexion? Well, I'm going to put a full sit-up in there because if you hinge just from the hips, or you could have a hanging leg raise, but you hinge straight from the hips and it pulls the hip, the, the femur towards the pelvis, basically. So you end up with a full hip flexion as the agonist, as, as the antagonist for the agonist which is glutes hip extension so it can look a bit confusing especially when you work it out but my main point here is that you've got this cross in the middle whereby hip extension and hip extension will be the concentric eccentric pairing and you can see how they they map across so you need to know what is the opposite to hip extension that's hip flexion and then when you're looking at the antagonist then that's going to have an the the other way around in compared to concentric and eccentric contractions and joint actions. I hope that makes sense. Please do pop a little comment below. And what I want you to do is to follow this grid with me. So watch this again, draw out the grid and do this for another, uh, another muscle. So maybe choose bicep and tricep, keeping it nice and simple. Or you might go for chest muscles or you might go for shoulders. But do this yourself and follow it through and then let me know how you get on as a little task.